Well, welcome everybody and good evening. We're excited to have you here tonight. Welcome to our webinar for the Carthage College Psychology Department. My name is Greg Huss. I'm one of the directors of admission and financial aid at Carthage. Uh, we wish you could all be on campus tonight. We'd love to be showing you things in person live on the shores of Lake Michigan. We have a beautiful campus there uh, just north of the city of Kenosha. If you're not too familiar, um, you know, being in the Chicago Milwaukee corridor has a lot of advantages. And we have about 2,600 students. This year we had students from 38 states and 10 countries. So you do get to meet a lot of people while you're on campus. As we go through the webinar tonight, we've got a great presentation for you. And you will notice the question and answer features at the bottom of your screen. There's also a chat feature. Feel free to, as we go through the presentation, type your questions in that, in either of those features. And at the end of the presentation, I will come back on and we'll have our professors answer all those questions for you. So we've got a great, great presentation for you here. I'm going to start it out by introducing Dr. Tony Barnhart, professor of psychology at Carthage. And he will share his screen and we'll get things started. Hello, Thanks, Tony. Greg. Hi. Let me get, uh, yeah, let me get my screen shared here. All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, so thank you so much for, for coming to this webinar. Uh, we're excited to tell you about uh, some of the things that we're up to in the Department of Psychological Science at Carthage College. Uh, so here is the plan for this evening. You're going to meet five sixths, five sixths of the uh, faculty of the Department of Psychological Science uh, this evening. Uh, we're going to tell you a little bit about our, our philosophy for the department and for the major. Uh, you'll meet all of us and hear about how we came to, to find ourselves at Carthage College and what we contribute to the Department of Psychological Science. We have uh, specialists in a variety of different areas to build a, a diverse curriculum uh, for psychology students. We'll tell you a bit about the curriculum, our grand vision for it, and the, the tools that you acquire, the skills that you learn through uh, our classes. We'll tell you a little bit about the department culture, the, the kinds of relationships that we build in the department. And in fact, we have one of our, uh, our star students who will join us to talk a little bit about that. And finally, we'll close by telling you a little bit about trajectories beyond Carthage, what some students do with, uh, with their degrees uh, and with that, that toolbox, that toolkit that we, we give to them. So uh, you may have noticed that we are a department of psychological science. Uh, we don't call ourselves a department of psychology. And that's because we put science at the center of everything we do. It is the, the thread that pervades the entire curriculum. Uh, because we believe that uh, the skills that come along with the, uh, an ability to engage with science are skills that are highly marketable, that will uh, allow you to thrive in a variety of vocations, uh, and that will allow you to be great consumers of information beyond Carthage. Uh, so first, a little bit about our philosophy. Uh, the faculty of the Department of Psychological Science really embrace uh, what's called the teacher-scholar model. Uh, so what's that mean? Well, at a lot of institutions, uh, Faculty research is like completely partitioned from teaching. They are treated as separate and distinct entities. Uh, but at Carthage, we combine the two. We appreciate that scholarship, engaging in research, is a powerful teaching tool. Uh, and so as teacher scholars, we bring students in as co-investigators co on our research. So uh, students get to have a hand in the entire research process uh, and really take ownership of some of the, the work that they're doing. Uh, and this leads to students being co-authors on published papers uh, and giving presentations at conferences uh, all over the world. In fact, uh, you'll, you'll hear about a variety of different conferences that students presented at uh, tonight. Uh, so I'm gonna try to keep this relatively brief so that we have ample time for questions, but uh, Given the number of people that will be contributing to this webinar, I suspect we'll get a little verbose. We'll do our best. Uh, but let me first introduce you to the faculty of the Department of Psychological Science. 
So as I mentioned, my name is Anthony Barnhart. Uh, I am an associate uh, professor and chair of the Department of Psychological Science. And I came to psychology through a rather circuitous path. I, uh, before I was a psychologist, before I was even an undergraduate, uh, I was a professional magician. Uh, and magicians are kind of informal cognitive scientists who have hypotheses about how the mind works that drives the techniques that they use to fool people. Uh, and so as, uh, as a performing magician, I became really aware of how, um, how fallible our psychology is, how easily our perceptions and our memory can be manipulated. Uh, and that's what drove me toward an interest in informal psychology. Uh, I was an undergraduate at a small liberal arts college, much like Carthage. Uh, and I had a bunch of professors who were really supportive of, uh, of my interest in magic and, and trying to highlight relationships between magic and psychology. Uh, ultimately, I went to graduate school uh, at Arizona State University to be a language researcher. Uh, but while I was in graduate school, I started to see people publishing research that was using magic in the laboratory as a tool for studying attention and perception. And I thought, there's nothing special about me for studying language, but I have all this training as a magician that I could really put to good use in this new area of research. So that, uh, that became my central focus. And that's a big part of what I do at Carthage. I use magic in the laboratory, both as a way to come up with research questions, but also as a tool for studying attention and perception. Uh, and that bleeds into my classrooms as well, because magic has a way of highlighting some of these psychological principles that are usually invisible. Uh, so magic is a big part of what I do. Uh, and uh, it probably gets tiresome for my colleagues. <laughs> so uh, let me pass the baton now to my colleague, uh, Dr. Leslie Cameron, who will tell you a little bit about uh, how she came to be at Carthage and what she does as a teacher scholar. Thanks, Tony. Good evening, everyone. I'm so glad that you're able to join us. Um, and I can tell you that magic never gets boring. We never tire of, of uh, Dr. Barnhart's magic tricks. Um, so I came, I've been at Carthage for 18 years now, and I came because I love to teach. I was really wanting to be at a place where um, teaching was important, but I also love to do research. And I particularly love to do research with um, students. So I've been really fortunate over the, uh, my time at Carthage to work with many, many talented students doing um, lots of um, interesting uh, research. So. Uh, my area of interest are, is in uh, human perception and cognition or mental processes. And one of the areas that I'm really very excited about is um, human olfaction or sense of smell. And I became interested in this um, from the perspective of hearing about pregnant women who um, felt that they had a heightened sense of smell. And what's interesting is even though there's lots of anecdotal evidence of that kind, it turns out that um, there's not very good scientific evidence that shows the change of sense of smell in pregnancy. So I've been working on that for a number of years and um, find that really um, very, very interesting topic. And then I've sort of started um, studying olfaction more generally. And as you may be aware, uh, I have the feeling some of my attention will be directed to, to COVID-19 because sense of smell has been identified as one of the markers of, um, or one of the symptoms of COVID. So um, I spent some time today even just looking at the dozens of articles that have already been published just in the last month on that topic. So um, olfaction often I think gets short shrift, but it is really an important topic and uh, particularly topical at the moment. Um, the other thing I, I, uh, I have really enjoyed working on um, what's called the Scholarship of Teaching and Learning. And so you can see I'm um, the, a Wagner Teacher Fellow, which means I was given a small um, some, some, uh, a stipend for working with um, to, to do some of this research. And I've been really enjoying working with Holly Pelnar, who you see on, uh, in, the, in, in the photo there, who you'll meet later. And we've been working on ways to um, improve teaching and learning, particularly around the idea of um, uh, graphical or 
quantitative literacy or graph literacy. And so um, we've done some studies on eye tracking uh, using an eye tracker that we have at Carthage, which the, the picture on the screen there shows you an example of um, some data from an eye tracking lab looking at where uh, faculty and students look when they're reading graphs. Um, and more recently, we've been doing some work on um, what's called decoding, which is interviews trying to understand what people um, uh, think that they're doing when they're reading graphs. So I've spoken too long, um, but these are a couple of the uh, areas that I've been really excited to work on um, and particularly work on with, with students. So back to you, Dr. Barnhart. Sorry to be a little, a little verbose. I'm not even going to come on camera. I'm just going to pass the baton to Dr. Dennis Monk so he can tell you a little bit about uh, what he's up to. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's nice to be able to talk with you this evening. So um, I am in my 15th year at Carthage um, and third year in the Department of Psychological Science where I'm very happy. I feel like I have, have found my home. Um, my background is in clinical psychology and in special education. And I began the first part of my career uh, working in mental, mental health agencies. And so I did that for about a decade and then decided that I wanted to be a college professor and uh, went back and, and got my doctorate and um, have uh, en enjoyed it every, ever since then. And part of what I really enjoy about it is uh, being able to work with uh, students. And so um, in addition to being a professor in the department, I, I have another role and that is as director of the Teaching Commons, which is our teaching and learning center here uh, at the college. And so I have the the privilege of working with faculty and um, helping to bring uh, programs and uh, opp learning opportunities to, um, for us to all continue to develop our, um, our teaching skills, which are taken very seriously at Carthage. You can see on the screen, actually, the publication that's up here is Undergraduate Research and Teacher Education. So um, I have worked in a number of different um, initiatives on campus and undergraduate research is, is part of it. Um, and uh, another reason why um, I really enjoy the time in uh, psychological science. So I teach, not surprisingly, I teach a fieldwork class given how much time I spent early in my career in applied settings. Um, I also teach, a, I'm, right now I'm teaching a psychological science of teaching and learning course, which is brand new and really allows me to um, introduce students to a lot of the ideas and uh, theories that we actually talk about as faculty on campus, which has been, which has been really interesting. In, in terms of my own, uh, I have a couple of uh, research projects going right now. I'm part of a team that's actually researching how students develop their sense of vocation. And so uh, we're just finishing data collection on that. I'm doing that with a, a professor from the nursing department. And um, most recently with students in our department, I um, have research with on um, student reflection. And so we had students, um, we had an experiment in which students would come in and, and perform a task and then we would ask them to re reflect on their performance and we had a way of analyzing those responses and trying to figure out what are the variables that influence how students reflect on um, on their performance what kinds of things do they say reflection something that we we ask students to do all of the time so um, so those are the things that I have going on now. And I would just say it's an exciting department. I can still say that because I'm relatively new. And I think I'm um, uh, uh, glad that you're giving us a look. Thank you, Dennis. I am going to pass the baton now to Dr. Nora Nichols. Thanks, Tony. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this uh, Thursday night. I am finishing my first year at Carthage as a professor, and um, it's been a little bit of a funky year given what happened this semester, but I have loved every minute of it. I came from actually a couple departments that were based in biology before I joined the psychology department at Carthage. So I did my undergraduate at the University of Notre Dame, and I was always involved in biology research. So looking at how stressors in non-humans, so in animals, affect their behavior and their biology. And when I went on to do my graduate work at the University of Chicago, I kind of flipped to humans 
And I started studying how stress affects behavior and hormones in humans. Um, so I kind of made the jump from more biology focus, looking at behavior to behavioral focus with looking at biology. And my graduate work looked at how stress affected hormones. So I would run my own hormonal assays in lab and looking at how stress also affects things like cooperative decision-making, risk-taking behavior. Um, and that's what I still get to do in terms of looking at how stress affects behavior here at Carthage. So I still study social value of threat. So the type of stress that you feel in any sort of interaction, whether in person or digital. And I'm really interested in how students feel that threat on college campuses. So feeling stressed out in different types of social interactions. Um, I'm lucky that stress seems to be a topic that students are interested in um, and they feel like they can experience a little bit of that themselves. But Carthage has been such an awesome place to be. I knew I wanted to be at a small liberal arts environment um, after doing a lot of studying at large R1s, <clears throat> excuse me. So I'm super happy to have landed at Carthage. Um, my colleagues are fantastic and they do awesome work. I will repeat Dr. Cameron by saying we do really never get tired of the magic, Tony. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> So uh, the next uh, member of our department hasn't actually joined the department yet. Uh, we are excited to welcome a new colleague in the fall. Dr. Melanie Nyhoff will be joining us. Uh, and she is a developmental psychologist, but with a cross-cultural focus. Uh, so uh, she is actually a mover and shaker in the, the scientific study of religion and the psychology of religion. And she does a lot of work in looking at uh, how culture shapes the way that religion presents and how uh, children may differ in their, in their, uh, their religious uh, activities across cultures. So for example, I'm highlighting one of her recent papers here that looks at uh, children's God concepts across cultures. Uh, so what do small children believe about God? And she has done a lot of field work in Indonesia uh, to, to collect data from Indonesian children from a variety of different religious backgrounds. So we will be excited to welcome her. And I imagine that she will lead some, uh, some exciting study tours to Indonesia once that's something that's back on the table again. Uh, the final member of our department, uh, alphabetically, is Dr. Katerina Salaska, and so I will ask her to come on camera and tell you a little bit about herself. You are still muted. <laughs> I was thanking you for clarifying that I'm only last alphabetically. Um, so I'm not muted now, am I? I'm good. This is like the teaching complex of the times of COVID uh, that we're on mute forever. Um, so my name is Dr. Katerina Salaska. Um, this is the end of my second year at Carthage. Um, I've taught at a couple places before coming here and I've landed here and I'm very happy to make Carthage my, um, my home as a professor. Um, I did my undergraduate and my um, master's degree work at the um, at a college in Arizona called Northern Arizona University um, in the beautiful Flagstaff, Arizona. Uh, and while I was there, um, like Dr. Nichols mentioned, uh, you know, kind of being exposed to the liberal arts ideas, uh, the professor that I worked with that I, that also had a very similar teacher scholar model that Dr. Barnhart mentioned a little bit ago, um, he just really got me excited and his approach to mentoring me through research and how he was in the classroom, I just said, this is the life for me. Uh, and so I went off to get my PhD at the University of New Hampshire, um, really kind of knowing that I wanted to be at a small liberal arts college. And so while there, I ended up um, focusing in on both social psychology and personality psychology as my um, area. And so I got a lot of really great research experience in both of those avenues. Uh, and so 
on one hand, I do quite a bit of work um, looking at pro-social behavior or helping behavior and looking at how we engage in social support. And so over the years, that's looked different across time. But for the last several years, my focus has been on how we help um, and engage with young adults who have been diagnosed with a chronic illness. Um, chronic illnesses are something that young adults um, are, well, they're going to spend the rest of their lives with um, by their very nature. Uh, but many chronic illnesses are diagnosed um, kind of in that young adulthood period, which is just already a really interesting time. Uh, and so I've really been interested in how um, young adults kind of factor this into their sense of self and identity and um, learn to ask for help and to engage with their social supporters, um, their friends, their peers, their family, and form new relationships in the midst of having this diagnosis. Um, additionally, uh, I also study uh, something called personal intelligence. Uh, which is um, similar to emotional intelligence, which most people have heard more of. Um, I worked with one of the first people to study emotional intelligence, and uh, he's kind of gone on to instead um, it, th this work of personal intelligence, which is our ability to understand uh, personality of ourselves and the people around us, and to use that information to guide our interactions and the decisions that we make in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, to hopefully make ones that are going to be really well suited to us and to our ultimate success. So um, I've worked on some work uh, kind of looking at how personal intelligence looks uh, in different contexts and um, kind of what are some of the benefits of personal intelligence. Um, right now we're in the process of developing some work uh, looking at the process of reading and how engaging with different types of literature um, is a way of teaching us about personal information um, and how we use that information. So that's kind of just starting to come up uh, through some of my collaborations. And I've got two students jumping on board next semester to, to take some of that work on. And I've certainly worked with students on my pro-social helping behavior. I have another summer research student um, working on a project this summer, um, doing some interviews and learning some more about uh, how young adults with chronic illness interface with their social supports. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so you've met all of us now. That's everybody. Uh, so at this point, uh, we'd like you to walk, we'd like to walk you through our vision of the curriculum. Um, and I'm gonna ask uh, Dr. Cameron to come on camera here uh, because in many ways she was the architect of this curriculum. Uh, and so she is the best person to explain it to you. Well, I'm not sure about that, but um, so uh, I was the chair before Dr. Barnhart was the chair. And for the last um, seven years or so, we, we um, have been working on, uh, well, we worked a lot on changing the curriculum or sort of tweaking, fine tuning the curriculum um, to make it something that is, I think, uh, a really exciting curriculum for a couple of reasons. Um, one is, as Dr. Barnhart mentioned already, our focus is on psychology as a science. We're a department of psychological science and we really put, as you can see, we're all very excited about the research that we do. We like to involve students in that. We see that as an important teaching tool. So to that end, the, the curriculum is designed to support students in doing that. And we really do think, again, I'll just highlight what Dr. Barnhart said, that regardless of what students want to do after they leave Carthage, and you'll see um, in a few minutes what some of the things are that uh, students are doing when they leave Carthage, um, regardless of what they're doing, this forms a really good foundation for, um, for those activities. So, so that's one thing. The other thing about the curriculum is that it's really a joint activity. So the whole department is involved in teaching at every um, at every level of the, of the uh, curriculum. And that starts right out in uh, Introduction to Psychological Science. So for the first decade I was at Carthage, I taught intro myself, um, uh, lots and lots of sections of it. And, uh, and I really felt like it's such a big discipline. There's so many uh, different facets of psychology. I'm not an expert in pro-social behavior or stress or magic or um, and there's so many things that uh, that need to be covered in that introductory course that I really felt like it would be best team taught. And so that's the approach that we take now. So every semester, four of the faculty are involved in teaching that course and are the 
uh, the, the main instructors for the course. Everybody participates to some extent, but there are at least four people who are um, in the uh, teaching in that course. And, and so students are learning from those people about the areas of psychology that they know best and, and are really excited about. So that's what the intro course is really about, is um, getting kind of that broad foundation uh, from people who are um, sort of more experts in each of those areas with a focus on research. So even in the first, uh, the first course that you take with us, uh, students are involved in conducting a research project um, in a group. And, um, and that's one of the, the uh, important sort of end, end goals of that course is to have students be able to talk about this research project. We have courses in research methods and, psych and statistics a couple of them that are inter, uh, sort of interconnected courses that students take one after the intro course and then another one after they've started to delve into the different um, what we call breadth courses, which are listed there on the screen. You can see things like sensation and perception, cognitive psychology that I mentioned um, before, social psychology, um, intro to behavioral neuroscience, and there should be um, child and adolescent. Um, development as well. So those students take four of those five courses before doing a little bit more research methods and statistics and then they take several um, depth courses and some examples um, of those courses are mentioned here. The top one of the most uh, sought after courses I would say is the abnormal psychology course and that's actually taught by um, Dr. Barnhart's wife. So we haven't met absolutely everybody in the department. We do have some faculty that only teach um, a course or two each semester. So our part-time faculty cover exciting courses like abnormal psychology, um, uh, child psychopathology. Uh, I think Dr. Uh, Monk will be taking that on, was taught by a faculty who just retired personality, Dr. Slaska teaches. So those courses go more in depth in the, the main areas um, in, the, in the department. So, and then we all, fin every student finishes by uh, taking some kind of capstone experience. We call that a senior thesis. Students can do work in the lab with one of us. Um, they, they can work in, in the, out in the field uh, with Dr. Monk. So we've got, and if you're interested, we can certainly tell you more about that. But students get out in the, uh, into um, various, um, um, flanking on the various organizations in the community to do work, for example, working with um, children with autism um, and, and do a study about that. Um, and then there's also an option for a seminar course. So I'm sure you'll hear uh, more about that, but that's one of the kind of exciting opportunities that comes towards the end of students' time at Carthage. And again, it's something that we're all involved in. So we all teach intro, we're all involved in the research methods and the um, in various breadth and depth courses, and we're all involved um, in, the, in the end. So uh, I hope that uh, gives you a sense of kind of what you would take um, in your classes at, at Carthage. Back to you. Thank you, Leslie. Uh, so I think uh, hopefully you get a sense that um, everything we do in this department, we do as a team. Uh, the, the curriculum itself is really team-based. We, every faculty member in the department has a hand in teaching in the research methods and statistics sequence. Uh, we all have a hand in overseeing capstone experiences. We all have a hand in the introduction to psychological science. And that team-based perspective on delivering the curriculum uh, is also echoed in the way that we engage with uh, students beyond the classroom. Uh, so we have worked really hard to develop um, Kind of a culture within the, de the department that uh, that builds builds community and celebrates scholarship. So we have a, it's probably really small for you to see, but this is a, a screen grab of our schedule of events from the fall 2019 semester. We try to schedule a handful of events every month that have uh, different social components, where it might just be getting together to chat about a topic uh, or really deeply educational components, bringing in guest speakers, uh, doing screenings of films that, that speak on psychology and deconstructing them as a group. Um, so uh, one of the people on this call uh, that we mentioned earlier is a student, Holly Pelnar, one of our star students who's shown up in a lot of these pictures that you've seen thus far. Uh, I asked Holly to, to join this call so that she could talk a little bit about the Department of Psychological Science from the student's perspective. 
so hi Holly, thank you. Hi everyone, um, welcome. So I'm just finishing my junior year here at Carthage and I'm obviously very involved in the department and I love it. I mean, all of my experiences have been wonderful. There are so many opportunities to get involved and to get to know everyone in the department, faculty, your peers, and that's one of the benefits of going to a small liberal arts school, because not only do you build these great relationships with people, but you could tell that the faculty are there to help you grow and to help you learn. Um, and again, there are so many opportunities. Um, I've been doing research for almost two years with Dr. Cameron. Um, recently just finished my thesis. Um, and then as for outside of schoolwork, some of the things I'm involved in, every Tuesday, we all get together in the psychology lab and drink coffee, have some snacks, and we will just sort of have a topic to discuss each week. It could be, um, you know, a faculty member's research experience. Sometimes, like Dr. Barnhart said, we'll have guest speakers. I am also president of both the International Honors Society of Psychology and the General Psychology Club, um, which everyone is welcome to join. And we just sort of organize a bunch of events where we watch TED Talks or movies and then just have discussions about them. Uh, at the end of each semester, we have like a little potluck. So it's a fun time. And again, great way to get to know everyone and a lot of valuable resources that come with having such a close-knit department. Thank you, Holly. Uh, so one of the things that I mentioned early on in this call is that we're, um, we, we really do celebrate scholarship and we make a concerted effort to get students' experiences uh, beyond the Carthage community. So for example, um, we have a rather large presence at uh, a large psychology conference that happens every year in Chicago called the Midwestern Psychological Association Meeting. Uh, and uh, one of the values of being so close to Chicago in Kenosha is that we can hop on the Metro train and take it down to Chicago to attend this conference. And unfortunately, uh, we weren't able to go this year because of uh, COVID-19, but we were on track to take our largest group of students ever. Uh, just looking at the students who were giving presentations at the Midwestern Psychological Association, that was 16 students. Uh, and we had many more who were coming along just to gain the experience of attending a scientific conference and, and attending the talks and the career development opportunities. Uh, so we, we legitimately hope the next year things will have turned around and we will be able to, to once again take this group of students to Chicago for that event. Uh, one of the other things that I, now I realize it looks a little creepy on this slide is uh, <laughs> this is an induction ceremony for Psychi, the uh, National Honor Society for Psychology. And we, we uh, have it in one of the small meditation chapels on campus, but I, I appreciate it looks spooky in this context. Uh, Okay, so uh, we, we anticipated that you might be curious to hear how we as a department have responded to COVID-19, what our experience has been moving courses online. Um, I would argue that as a department, we were, uh, we were reasonably well prepared for this surprise turn of events. Um, we uh, have rather deftly turned our classes, moved our classes online. Uh, what you're seeing here uh, is actually a, a couple of screen grabs that uh, Dr. Nichols uh, got from a couple days ago in her Research Methods and Statistics 2 course uh, after these students successfully defended their uh, semester-long research project. Uh, and I don't think I see any tears there, so they did a great job. Um, so yes, uh, we've all kind of taken different tactics at moving our courses online. Some of it, uh, many of us have a synchronous component where we're still meeting with students regularly each week, but also offering the opportunity for students to engage with content asynchronously if their life has really been upended uh, by this 
this set of challenges. Um, so we wanted to try to maintain the social connections that we have with students, even though we are physically distanced. Uh, and so those coffee and conversation events that Holly mentioned, we've turned into online events. So now every week on Tuesday, we host something that I've morbidly called COVID and conversation uh, in, a, in a Google Meet room. We all meet up uh, and uh, these tend to be more informal. They are just a way to maintain this social contact that we've worked so hard to establish in the department. Uh, and we have about uh, 20 or 25 people in these calls every Tuesday at 1130. Uh, the other adventure of the semester has been um, figuring out how to handle our uh, capstone students. At the end of every semester, we usually have this big uh, event where research and thesis students present their work in poster presentations or talks, uh, and we can't do that this semester. And so we have turned that into an online event that's actually taking place tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow we have our first virtual uh, psychological science thesis and research presentations event. So all of our thesis and research students have put together about five minute lightning talk videos where they describe their research. Uh, I've made those available online for anybody who's interested in them. Uh, and tomorrow we will come together uh, from 4 to 6 p.m. so that students can answer questions about the work that they presented in these videos uh, and so that students who are candidates for honors in the major can give live presentations of their work and Holly is one of those students. Uh, and we'll also do an award ceremony and things like that. Uh, so I'm hoping that Greg can give me some pointers on how to run a good Zoom meeting for tomorrow. Uh, so finally, we wanna leave you with a sense of what our students do beyond Carthage. Uh, as we said, uh, we, are, we are trying to equip students with a set of skills that will uh, benefit them regardless of their trajectory. Uh, many of our students continue onward into graduate programs that do have a focus in, in, uh, in helping, in counseling programs or clinical psychology programs, uh, but we also have a variety of students that go on straight into the workforce, applying the things that they've learned, uh, or into graduate programs of different flavors. Uh, so while preparing for this talk, I had a, had a good time kind of looking through what recent graduates have done with themselves. Uh, I've highlighted three recent graduates who are all uh, in exciting graduate programs. On the upper left is uh, Lizzie Wenzel, one of our star students who is now a few years into her PhD at the University of Illinois at Chicago in behavioral neuroscience. Uh, below her is Tessa Constantine, Constantine, who is a psychology major, but went, uh, went on to get her master's degree in sociology at Columbia uh, University. And uh, on the right is Corey Shearer, who is, uh, who is graduating this year, but already knows she's going on to do graduate work at Mount Mary University in, in counseling psychology. Uh, we do have a lot of students that have gone straight into the workforce in a variety of capacities. Um, uh, we've, we're establishing something of a pipeline to UW-Madison. Uh, we've had a few students who have gone on to, to support research there, either as, uh, in one case, a lab manager or just as research assistants who are paid for their time. Uh, and we have a, a star student who's teaching in Spain right now. So, a variety of different pathways, and we hope that we are giving students uh, really marketable skills that will benefit them both as consumers of science uh, and as, uh, as researchers or uh, people in a variety of fields. So that is uh, all that we have for you. Uh, thank you very much, but we are uh, all available to, to take questions now. Uh, Greg, should we all just come on camera? Yeah, that would be great if everybody could open their cameras up again. Um, we do have a couple questions that have come in and I'll ask those, but uh, students and families, feel free to use the question and answer line to uh, uh, type your questions in there and then we'll have our panelists answer your questions. So the first question that came up, Maddie, thank you for the question. It's, can you start working in a lab 
doing research in your freshman year. Indeed, you can. Uh, and in fact, okay, here's the, here's the dirty little secret. I like to snag up some freshmen. I like to get freshmen and put them in the lab, and then they can work in the lab for years and train other students. Oh, it's a delight. Yeah, but we like to, we like to grab those motivated students who can really move into leadership roles in the department early on. And in fact, Dr. Salaska has one of these really motivated freshmen who's currently working in my lab and who will be doing a summer undergraduate research experience with her this summer. So, yeah. yeah. And Holly started also as a freshman yeah, that's right. and did a summer project right after her freshman year. Sorry, Dr. Salaska, I think I cut you off. <laughs> no, I was just going to say that this, this freshman, we, again, several of us because of the way that we do intro, you know, we, several of us got to know this student and um, just very excited by her work. We asked her to come on. She's getting paid as a tutor um, in our intro class. You know, she took intro last semester. She's now a tutor getting paid to help other students be successful. Uh, she's, you know, already got involved in Dr. Barnhart's lab. She's gonna do some work with me this summer um, on some research, a remote project. Um, and so, yeah, we are constantly looking out and for students to express interest, we absolutely, what Dr. Barnhart said, we will nab you really quickly. And the earlier you gain this kind of experience, the easier it's going to be to get through that capstone experience. It's going to just be like another semester. That's such a fantastic advantage and benefit for students at Carthage. Um, you know, the, the learning at Carthage is experiential learning. It's really based in the research. So you get a lot of hands on research in, in the different subjects and majors at Carthage. Thank you for your answer. Uh, Julie would like to know, do students learn about different types of mental illnesses and disorders throughout their time at Carthage? Absolutely. Uh, I wonder if uh, not to put you on the spot, but, but Dr. Monk, would you want to talk about that, given your, your background in that area? Certainly. Um, so, um, well, it begins in intro, where we spend a little bit of time talking about in the, in the intro class. And then I think that the courses that students take that are the most focused in that area are obviously abnormal psychology and then childhood psychopathology. So those are two, two courses that really are um, uh, focused on really covering the entire landscape of uh, mental disorders and um, mental illness across the lifespan. So, and there we have other courses. There, uh, I would say that uh, there are other courses that are related to that. And when we think about courses that are clinic, like clinical in nature, clinical preparation, we also have some. Uh, we have courses in uh, interpersonal communication. I would say some, some of the courses that have. To, that we're going to be, uh, Dr. Nichols is going to be teaching related to stress. Um, also, um, I think are, are relevant for um, uh, clinical preparation. So I think there's a, there are a few courses, yes. And of course, field work, you have the opportunity to choose to work in the field and work at an agency that actually um, supports um, in individuals with um, mental disorders. So. And we also have a Department of Social Work that offers a handful of classes that have a, have a clinical flavor to them. So many psychology majors will take, take a handful of classes from the Social Work Department as well. Terrific. Uh, another question that came on was about double majors or majors and minors. Is it possible to double major with psychology and another subject? And if so, what do you see students most commonly put with psychology? Indeed, it is. Uh, yeah, many, many students double major. I can't remember if Holly is a double major. No. Sorry, no, you're not. Uh, we, have, we have a lot of students that double major in psychology and neuroscience. Uh, but um, indeed, there, it, it, is, it is perfectly easy to do a double major. It does mean that you will do two capstone projects. Uh, but uh, Oftentimes, students are excited about those capstone projects, and it's great to get that kind of real-world experience in both of the disciplines that you're being trained in. But yeah, it's absolutely possible. Many do it. Yes. I add just that I've often seen double majors in criminal um, criminal justice or education as well. Um, occasionally, a double major in social work. Um, uh, I think right now I, I have a student who's a double major in environmental science. Um, 
I, there, there's lots of different possibilities, um, but those are kind of more the common ones that I've seen. Terrific. All right, the next question is about class size in the psychology uh, area. In the psychological sciences, what do you see as your average class size? The average class size is probably in the ballpark of 20. If we look across the whole curriculum, uh, the, the classes earlier in the major, of course, are larger than the classes later in the major. You're getting more and more individualized uh, contact in those latter courses. Um, so, for example, the those a lot of those depth courses are capped at you know 15 or 18 um, but when you're getting into thesis courses and independent study it might be you and a couple of others uh, yeah so they but I would does that sound right to you Dr. Cameron probably an average of 20 if we look at everything Sorry. Yes, that's a, that's about right. I mean, the 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 two thousand the two thousand level courses are um, just a little bit. Yeah, somewhere between twenty and twenty five, maybe at the most. And then the in full disclosure, the intro class. Part of the reason that we can have these small classes is because we've combined. We basically combined four classes of twenty to twenty five in the intro class. So students are with one of the faculty members in intro, um, but then combine as a group. To make a, a bigger class um, for uh, for the for some of the some of the class periods. Terrific! So you definitely you will know your professors by name <laughs> for sure, and they'll know you by name. It's pretty awesome. And, and to be fair, that's one of the reasons behind the design of our introductory psychology as well. You're going to meet the entire faculty in one semester, so you're going to know everybody by name. Right. Right. Uh, students asking, you know, for students who took the AP psychology exam uh, and have the credit for it, what psychology classes would they take their first year? So, so we uh, allow the, the AP credit to count as an elective in the major. Uh, and in their first year, we encourage students to take our introduction to psychological science because we think we have such a unique focus in there. It's, it's so different from uh, introduction to psychology anywhere else. We think it's important enough that we encourage students to take it uh, in their first semester. And we also encourage students to jump into the research methods and statistics sequence in their first year because it is so foundational to everything else they will do in the major. Uh, as Dr. Cameron noted, all of those, um, those breadth courses, those 2000 level courses, uh, build upon what you're learning in research methods and statistics. You learn about these techniques and then you actually implement them in these breadth classes. So it's good to get your feet wet with the research methods and statistics as early as you can in your undergraduate career. Fantastic. Students and families, please keep the questions coming if you have them on your mind. Uh, the next question that came in was, does anybody work with addiction? Is there any addiction work at Carthage? Hmm. Uh, there might be some in neuroscience. I, so nobody in this room necessarily works with addiction. Okay. Hmm, that's a good question. Anybody wanna, wanna chime in? I can't think of anybody off the top of my head who specifically works with addiction. It of course is a topic that is, is addressed in abnormal psychology. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know that we have any addiction researchers per se. And we do have a scholarship for students. Sorry, we have a scholarship for students working um, on addiction, and so there, there and there are some field work opportunities, I believe, internship opportunities. Um, so not necessarily right with us in the department, but there are some opportunities at Carthage. Okay, fantastic. Any other question? Oh, here comes another question. What opportunities are there to study abroad on a trip that contributes towards my psychology major? I think Dr. Salaska should answer that one because she is she is planning just such an excursion. <laughs> You're muted or something. So our G term uh, would be the time when we do that, um, and so so we kind of 
do for our department, we do more of just the, you know, the two to three week uh, really condensed trips during the J term, as opposed to a whole semester abroad. Um, so as Dr. Barnhart mentioned earlier, um, our incoming faculty, Dr. Melanie Nyhoff, who is likely to um, turn some of her research into uh, a J term study tour as well. Um, I'm working right now to develop, I am a Harry Potter nerd. Uh, major Harry Potter nerd. If you walk into my office, when we're allowed to be in offices, you will see Harry Potter everything, everywhere. Um, I have Harry Potter face mask, literally right here. Um, Harry Potter nut, truthfully. Uh, so I'm working on developing a study tour, uh, looking at how psychology is demonstrated throughout the books um, and how uh, there's been some research on how um, reading Harry Potter, um, the books, is an avenue of addressing prejudice reduction. Um, and it becomes a way that we can have a dialogue about prejudice uh, without using the same overt categories that we have um, in our existing world. Uh, so that's a class that I'm working on where we would go to the UK and some of the, the major sites throughout Scotland and England um, that are relevant to Harry Potter. So, and yeah. Terrific. All right. Well, I don't see any other questions coming in, so I'll ask one. Would uh, any of you like to volunteer? What What is your favorite part of being a Carthage professor? I will. <laughs> I mean, I think I hope. Hopefully, you've seen. I've been here a long time, um, and uh, I have worked with amazing faculty my whole time, we, uh, and we've really built a department. I, I hope that you saw from this presentation that we have an incredible um, collaborative team in this department and, um, and that allows us to, and, and we've, you know, we've got these opportunities to work with amazing students. So that collaboration that I think, you know, the faculty, we're here, we stay here for a long time, the students, um, are only with us for a short time, but uh, but they're such an integral part and having this this wonderful team to work with is so great and to be able to share that with with the students um, is just been such a highlight working. Um, yeah, it's all it's out there. Fantastic. Yeah, I and I, you know, I've had uh, three of my children have attended Carthage. Uh, two are currently there now. I did not make them attend. They chose it on their own, by the way. But I would concur with what you said, Dr. Cameron, because professors have made such a difference in all of our students' lives. I always tell students when you're coming into Carthage, make sure you let your professors know what your goals are, where you want to go in life. They want to get to know you, and they open up doors for you. So kudos to all of you because you're what makes Carthage special. Any other questions coming in? Anybody else? Well, if there's no other questions, I, uh, you know, I, I hope that you enjoyed the presentation tonight. I hope you got to see how much professors do care about our students and how interactive professors are going to be with you. They will know you by name for sure, and they want to help you achieve your goals. Um, research opportunities obviously can start, you know, freshman year as Dr. Barnhart alluded to earlier on, we love getting you involved right away out of the gates. And, um, you know, we also have something called the Aspire program, which is very unique at Carthage. You won't find it at many other colleges. The Aspire program at Carthage is something we're excited about. It's actually getting national attention right now because it starts career development for all of our students in the freshman year. You know, many, many times students are waiting to visit a career center until senior year at other universities. At Carthage, it's a program that starts with you freshman year, and there's career counselors that will help you with that as well. So you've got a lot of help at Carthage. You've got your professors in class with you every day. You've got career coaches in the Aspire program, and then you also have a first-year success advisor that's going to help you as a freshman register for courses and really help you with the transition from high school to college, and that's somebody you're going to see 12 to 15 times your first year alone. So that, that's pretty good stuff. Um, if you're asking when you can apply to Carthage, for you students that are juniors on the call right now, you can apply to Carthage as soon as you finish your junior year. All the applications are right on our website. And, uh, for, you know, obviously if you're a senior, you can, hopefully you've applied by now, but, but you, you can do that application anytime. 
and and uh, you will have you know in a lot of colleges you have an admissions representative Carthage we do it a little differently you'll have an admission and financial aid representative um, at most colleges during financial aid season you get transferred to the financial aid office but here we're kind of your single point of contact for everything in your college search process so you will have a, an admission and financial aid person uh, that will be reaching out to you if you attend it in the coming days we do your admission work we help you with financial aid and finding scholarships and all those things to try to guide you through the college search process. We know it can be overwhelming at times and that's why we're here. A lot of times students will, um, you know, during their decision making process ask, ask to interact with professors and the professors are always more than happy to do that. So just reach out to us and let us know. We're all right on the website and um, we look forward to hopefully when it's safe to do so, everybody can come out and visit the campus because you can look at the pictures online, but it just doesn't do it justice until you're right there hearing the waves uh, wash up uh, on the shoreline there. It is a beautiful place to spend four years. I hear a lot of our students, a lot of times will make the comment, when else in my lifetime am I gonna be able to afford lakefront property? But you can do that for four years. I see Holly nodding her head over there. <laughs> so thank you. But uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We hope to see you at Carthage in the future and please do stay healthy and keep in touch. Have a great evening. Thanks everybody.